Welcome physics students to today's video in which we'll be looking at how we use video source slow-mo video via a program called Tracker to analyze motion such as position, velocity and acceleration. So let's have a look at how this works. Now our first step is to load up our video from our mobile phone, our slow-mo video and we're going to use the open files icon on the top left of our screen on the Tracker program. Okay, so you'll see on the screen we have the section on the left is in fact our video imported. Let's now look at the top menu and run across from left to right till we eventually hit this point where we're tracking. So the main two features of Tracker are that we're measuring our video in the correct frame rate. All times measured for speed, velocity, acceleration, etc. are based on accurate time measurement. So we need to make certain that the frames per second of this video are accurate. So we're going to use this icon, the one that looks like a purple film reel, and make certain our frame per second setting is correct. At the moment, this is stating that our video is at 30 frames per second, whereas I know this video was taken using a 120 frame per second, so I'll adjust that now. Okay, so I've updated the frame rate to 120 frames per second, and I can press OK. Equally as important as correct timing for our analysis of videos is correct distances. So the tracker program is based upon measuring pixels against a reference distance. So the next step is to set up a calibration stick. We want a new calibration stick. And when we do that, this blue measurement line appears with one meter above it. Now I've already pre-measured from that black mark to that black mark, one meter. So from that mark on our plane all the way down to our second mark on the plane, that has a distance of one meter and I can toggle that on or toggle it off. I'll get it out the road, so I'll toggle it off. I'm not interested in analyzing the entire video. What I want to do is move this bookmark to where the trolley starts moving. So at the moment, the trolley is stuck up the top and it's not moving yet. So if we keep moving this video forward, eventually get to a point. Eventually get to a point where the trolley will begin to move. And that's where we want to start analyzing our data. At this point, we can see here my fingers off the trolley and it's free falling. Likewise, the other end, we want to move the end of our video to a point where it's barely reaching the end of the track. Okay, so our trolley's coming down the track. And we're interested in getting it towards the end. It, I think it starts to go off the track about there. If we look at our video, it's starting to fall off the track. Good, so we've got a starting point and a finishing point. I can rewind that. When I play that section, that's only the motion of the trolley as it's free falling down the incline plane. That's what we want to track. Nothing before and nothing after. So I'll pause that and go back to the start. All right, let's go back. We now need to look at a coordinate system with the XY. The graphing all relies on the fact that we have some kind of coordinate. I'll grab that coordinate in the center. And I'm going to place it on that dot. Okay, if we were to zoom in, we can see that a piece of masking tape and a black dot's been put on our trolley. That's going to be our reference point. So that is, as you would think of a coordinate in maths, that's the zero, zero coordinate. Now I'm interested in the acceleration down the plane, so I can grab this little tab to the right hand side on my axis and pull that far right. That allows me to do a fine adjustment of the angle. So my x, y axis is now heading parallel to the plane and perpendicular. We're particularly interested in this x direction down the plane. So I can now toggle that on and off. I'll get it out of the way. Our final little part, we want to perform a track. We click on that and we choose a new point mass. That's done. As soon as we do that, graphs, etc., appear on the right hand side. And now, finally, we're looking to use this particular icon, the star looking icon, the blue and red one, to do what we call an auto track. So we click on that and another menu option appears on the far right of the screen. Now the next step probably depends on whether you have a IBM compatible Windows machine or whether you're an Apple Macintosh machine. For the IBM compatibles, I'm pressing Control Shift. And when I do that, this circle appears. I want to put this circle right on top of my black spot and click it. So it takes a picture of that region and we can see on the far right hand side, on the template and the match, we have the white bit of tape with the black dot. 
that's important we have some kind of contrast for the auto track to work. Now in terms of auto tracking this, we simply need to press this search button. So I press that and the data starts auto tracking. I can close that. We can see on the right hand side, we have this amazing position against time graph. And it has a nice typical curve that we'd expect for an object accelerating. Now we can change the axes on either of these two graphs. At the moment we've set this up to display two graphs. That's why we've got a second one here on the Y. We're not worried about the Y coordinates. What I'd like to have a look at is the velocity in the X. Now you can see here, generally speaking, the velocity is increasing throughout the time. There are some variations based on the uh, sensitivity of the tracking device. But generally there's an increase with the velocity over time. We're interested in this experiment to find the acceleration of the trolley. So let's right click and I want to select the analyze option. We hit the analyze, hit the curve filters and I'm interested in the line option. So this comes from the analyze, curve fitter and the line option. I click on the line and it generates an equation down here. Effectively it's like a y equals mx plus c. If we go across the right hand side, the value for a, which in this case is the gradient of our graph, is 1.95. You can also click the auto fit mode and that will simplify our view of this A value as well. So it's now changed to 1.951. 1.951. Now e to the naught means it's times 10 to the power of naught. It's an engineering notation. 10 to the naught just means times by one. So that gives me an acceleration. The gradient of velocity time graph is acceleration of 1.95 meters per second per second. So whatever value you're getting in this particular box next to the parameter A is the acceleration of the trolley going down the incline plane. Once you've done that, it's really good, I think, to snip that particular image or save it. We want to make sure that when we do a snipping that we've got the graph and we've also got our gradient A highlighted. This shows proof that this has been done. It's evidence. So you would save that. You go file, save as, and you'd save that somewhere. Also, we'd like to save this track, having done it in case you need to come back and analyze the data again. So we go to file, save the tab, and you can see it saves it as a track file, should you need to come back to that file at any time. Look, thanks for watching. I hope this shows you how to perform an auto track, the importance of making certain that you've got a calibration stick and also the correct frames per second, the frame rate, and how to use a velocity time graph to effectively calculate the gradient, which is the acceleration of our trolley cart. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.